Welcome to a Healing Peace Podcast. We partner with J Intel, a nonprofit organization that provides educational programs to promote emotional and mental health while building our identity in Christ. In this podcast series, you will learn about me, Kimir Baker, the CEO and founder of J Intel, and other life changers. We inspire, equip, and support you along your journeys. By the renewal of our minds, we overcome life challenges. We renew and rise up. Welcome back, ladies. I am so excited for today's show. If you were with me last week, we were talking about going through experiences that kind of shape who we are and kind of linger in our life. And at the end, I was like, hey, how do we get to a place where we can start identifying these beliefs, these ideas that we've developed through our experiences? And I'm so excited because I have a friend on the show. She actually came back. So I guess I'm doing something good when people want to come back. So if you can, Sindhu, please let people know who you are and why you're here. Okay. Well, hello. I am glad to be back, Kamir. Just a little bit about myself. So I guess uh, above all, I am a Christ follower and daughter of the King of Kings and so deeply indebted and so grateful to be his own. I am also the adult daughter to lifelong missionaries to India. I am wife to Robert Jefferson, godly, loving, and very smart slash nerdy man. I am mom to a seven-year-old live wire. My boy, Luke, is just full of life, laughs, and uh, mischief. So that's him in a nutshell. And I am also a counselor by profession and have been doing that in various capacities for the past 12 years. I guess I'd like to say that it is not just a profession for me, but it is also my circle of influence or my, my field where I work for the Lord and whether directly or indirectly, where I can share his love, his healing and his freedom with what I've learned as well as with the training that I've received and going to school and all of that. So that's just a little bit about me in a nutshell. Well, and I, I personally am aware that you do a great job of providing that insight to people and allowing people to connect with him in a different way and to kind of help shift their thought process. And and that's why you're here because we've been doing this segment, talking about our belief system, talking about how we think about ourselves. Mm -hmm. And I'm really excited because I know that uh, you'll have an opportunity to share some really encouraging things to help us to learn and grow more about us. And I'm assuming that you're prepared because you came back and that you enjoy, well, maybe not as much, but kind of like having this medium to talk to more people and to share more about God. Absolutely, Kamir. And when I had wind that you were talking about mindsets, that got me really, really excited. And I think that you are absolutely doing the Lord's work and doing some really wonderful work here. But as far as the mind is concerned and mindsets are concerned, I was really excited when I heard that you were going to be addressing that simply because I really do believe that our minds is is the battlefield where the most battles are, are fought, won and lost, you know, and especially, especially as Christ followers, what does that uh, look like for us? And and how can we be winning more battles rather than losing them? So, yeah. And your excitement was so there that I was like, well, you might as well just come and just talk about it. So I do appreciate that enthusiasm. And I look forward to you getting more of that information from you. Are you ready to shed relationship baggage? Want to feel empowered to create the lifestyle you want? Join us for our Living Free to Be Me program. Our program offers a holistic curriculum with interactive resources to help you experience freedom, heal your heart, and receive closure from past hurts. We have a new guided seven-week session opening up. Join us virtually on Tuesdays, 
May the 2nd through June the 13th from 7 to 8.30 p.m. Central Time. When you sign up, you are not only investing in yourself, but you will receive tools for a lifetime. Go to jintel.org forward slash living dash free to learn more and to sign up for transformative growth. So let's go ahead and jump on in. And one of the things that I, I may have said it briefly before, but if not, I'm throwing it out there now, which is we're going to talk about limited beliefs. And I wanted to say, Cindy, what are they? And I don't know if you guys have heard that term before. So I figured she'll probably be a better person to break that down for us. Can you give us a little bit more background information to what that is and how are they reinforced in our lives? Well, I'm going to do my best, Kamir. Before I jump into limited or limiting beliefs, I thought we would take a few minutes to talk about what are beliefs. And as I thought about it, I kind of put it this way. For me, a personal belief is a set of unwritten statements, rules, and even vows that we make to or for ourselves. So again, a set of unwritten statements, rules, and even vows that we make to and for ourselves. And if you're curious about some examples of that, here are some examples of positive beliefs or healthy beliefs or healing beliefs. I belong. I am wanted. I am accepted. So that would be some examples of positive healing or healthy beliefs. And if you say, Cindy, well, that sounds strangely familiar. That sounds a lot like something I would read from God's word. Then you would be absolutely right on that because the Bible is the ultimate love letter from God to us. And if you want to know, if you want to know who you are, the truth of who you are, then that's the place to go, the the foremost authority on who you truly are. I do appreciate you sharing that because I I think it's so difficult at times to stick to those positive beliefs. Absolutely. And that's why, Kamir, I said, Our mind is the battlefield where, as we are thrust into this world from the get-go, these beliefs are being shaped and formed. And whether those beliefs are positive, healthy ones, or whether they are false, negative, unhealthy ones, and limiting ones, depends a lot on the environment in which we are thrust into, the people that uh, we are around, the words that are spoken to us and about us, and as well as the experiences and the wounds that we bear as we go through life have a huge, huge impact on these unwritten rules statements and vows that we make for ourselves. Yeah. And so as you were saying that, I, I want to make sure that I heard you correctly. So we because I heard that the positive belief side. And so what makes that specifically or how does that go towards a limited belief? What where is that that breakdown or that middle point, that middle ground? What how does that work? Absolutely, Kamir. So that's a great question, right? I feel that personally, there's even research to show the environment that you grow up in. But even before you are born, when you're in your mother's womb, where you are knitted together by your creator, the unborn child begins to sense either a sense of being wanted, Mm. and at other times, even a sense of anxiety, perhaps, or angst or rejection, what is kind of being picked up from the mother. And then once the child enters into the world, of course, that's picked up in a bigger scale. Just children are little sponges. And I think you know exactly what I mean. I mean, they just pick up 
on your body language. You don't have to say a word, but the way that you treat them, your attitude. And so when a child is wanted, they have a very positive belief about themselves. Now, if let's say the opposite is true and they are in an environment which is hostile, which is not safe, which is very unpredictable, they have no idea what to expect at any given moment, then it is so easy for them to form another set of beliefs, what we called the limited beliefs or the false values. And some examples of that, Kamir, would be, I am not wanted. Hmm. My needs are not important. I have to always be in control. And last, but one of my favorites, I should be perfect. So these are some examples of the kind of limiting beliefs that this child will pick up in order to survive, in order to bring some organization or predictability to their otherwise unpredictable life so that it makes sense to them, if if that makes sense. It does. And as you're explaining what they are in your examples, I think I checked off about four of those. <laughs> oh, man. Especially the control and the perfectionism. I, I know mm-hmm. I've shared that numerously throughout the podcast in terms of just wrestling with. And, and then I also have a friend who comes on quite regularly and she's always talking about being able to release that, mm. to release that perfectionism, to release yes. that sense of control and to surrender that back to God. Mm -hmm. And that within itself is definitely a journey. Yes. But, but one of the things that I'm glad that you spoke about, which is um, in terms of how it's developed, because I know for myself, it's so easy to feel ashamed or guilty that I'm carrying that with me, not realizing that there's all these other circumstances that has brought that about in my life. Yes, yes, absolutely. So true. And that's, I think, Kamir, what makes it very real. So as much as I would say that these are limiting beliefs, Mm -hmm. there are aspects of those statements or those rules or those vows. There are aspects of them that are very valid Mm -hmm. and parts of them that are very real. Mm -hmm. So let's take the example of, I have to always be in control. Mm -hmm. Now, the child or the teenager or the young adult, at whatever life stage they may be, is being met with words or circumstances that are pretty, as I mentioned before, pretty unsafe and harsh. And their way of coping Mm. is by controlling something about themselves or their environment. And in that moment, it really does give them a feeling of control. Mm. And in fact, I would go so far as to say that is them surviving. Mm. They have kind of taken the situation in hand and found a way to adapt. It's like, if I'm a fish, I need to have fins uh, to swim. And so I can't be a fish and not have fins. I can't be a bird and not have wings. Wow, I'm sounding poetic here. (laughs) But it's almost like I need to find a way to cope with this. And so whether it's only a little bit true or not, adjusting my belief to this particular statement, I always have to be in control. It just helps me to cope better. It helps me to survive. And like I said, there's just enough truth in there for a child or a teen to think that, well, that's the absolute truth. And I have to spend the rest of my days living by this truth. Mm. And we all know that that is absolutely not true. Well, I hope we know that. And so I'm curious because as you were talking about that survival place and you were talking about coping, and and that's, I think, again, all response to what's going on. 
And so I'm curious because there's moments where we're like, okay, well, I'm ready to have a different response. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm ready to cope in a healthier way. But yet I go back and I repeat those things over and over again. And so what I'm curious with is not only with that emotional development, what is going on in our brains and, and how is our brains adjusting to this information? And then how is that creating these belief systems that are dominating our minds? Yeah, so Kamir, there is a difference between surviving and thriving. Mm -hmm. And as much as it is the brain's most important function to survive, but really our brain has the capability and the capacity to do so much more Mm. than simply survive. We have been created in the image of God and he gave his life so that we can have freedom and life in in abundance. And to me, that does not sound like surviving. Does that sound Hmm. like surviving to you? No. That sounds like thriving. And that's where we know that there are times in our lives when we will adopt these limiting beliefs and the more we practice them, Hmm. You were talking about the brain. Mm -hmm. The more we practice them, it's like there are patterns or grooves that form in our brain from uh, consistently thinking in a specific way. Hmm. And so it's almost like our brain simply handles what is the need of the hour, Hmm. which In that moment, if it's survival, then that's what the brain's going to do. But it's more than that, Kamir. It becomes a pattern in the brain. It becomes a habit. It's almost like there is kind of a hard wiring that happens in the brain. However, it is not actually hardwired, but we'll, I guess, come back to that in a little bit. But yeah, so what is supposed to be a coping mechanism in a certain season of your life instead becomes a harmful habit that keeps you stuck Mm. from moving forward in your life. We all have defense mechanisms. We all have coping mechanisms. We all have these limited beliefs. But again, they are only meant for a season. However, If we keep repeating them, if we keep thinking the same way, what really happens in our brain is that it becomes an actual groove in your brain. You're actually changing the physiology of your own brain, if you can believe that or not. Yeah, and I I do, I'm grateful that we kind of got to this place in a conversation because I know for me, since I'm a very emotional person, I don't necessarily equate my emotions to my brain activity. Like I I equate, okay, well, I need to change these things about myself. And I'm not necessarily aware that in the midst of that, I'm I'm creating this pattern that my brain is holding on to and, and it's being applied to other situations. So I'm very grateful for that insight because I think it opens up the door for us to realize that there is more going on than me just having a bad day. And you made the statement about, you know, we're, we're only meant to hold on for these things for a season. And so my question is, well, how do we get to that place where we start shifting that brain activity so that it stays a season and, and not decades? Yeah, that's a million dollar question. And I think that, Kamir, unfortunately, for most of us, we realize that our thoughts, our way of thinking, our mindset has kind of become a rut. We're stuck Mm. in the way we think about ourselves or we think about others, relationships, God, and even the world. And It's when we find ourselves really stuck that we begin to ask ourselves, okay, is this all there is? Am I going to spend the rest of my life feeling like I should be perfect? Is that the end of it? And Mm. 
And when you see that that path is just a vicious cycle of defeat and repeat of defeat, then you seek answers. And the wonderful thing that provides so much hope, I think, for all of us is the way that God has created our brains. We're all so aware of how our bodies have the ability to repair itself. A broken bone, an open wound, a little bit of assistance from medicine and doctor, or, or maybe a lot of assistance, whatever the case may be. There is a point in which the body itself takes over and the healing happens from the inside out. Mm-hmm. The wonderful thing, Kamir is that God created our brains to be healing as well. Mm. And sometimes it, it does need a little bit of a kickstart. Sometimes it does get into these ruts of limiting beliefs. Mm-hmm. But absolutely, when we realize that we are in a rut and we are stuck in this never-ending defeated thinking, mm. there is hope. And there is a a very popular word these days called uh, neuroplasticity. And Mm -hmm. what that simply means is that the brain can change itself. Mm. And so years of self-talk, negative self-talk, years of negative mindset, which has caused your brain to have certain pathways, these deep neural pathways that actually can be healed and changed. Mm. And that is the amazing thing about our brains. And I definitely appreciate you sharing that because I know I recently told someone the other day that I felt like the hamster on the wheel just running and not going anywhere yes. and just wearing myself out. Mm-hmm. And I think especially now too with this pandemic season and adjusting to life and then learning who we are, it's so easy to kind of get on that that meal of just, I'm just running, I'm going in circle, but, mm-hmm. but being forced to reevaluate, okay, is this really helping? Is this really healthy? Yes. And so I, I do appreciate you sharing that, yes, there is hope, thank the Lord. Yes. And that we don't have to stay in that place. And I'm, and I'm really grateful to know that I think it reveals the power of God mm-hmm. to know that he is always preparing and developing things so that we can heal and that we don't have to be in the same place. And one of those places that requires healing is our brain. Yes, absolutely. And it's nothing to be ashamed about either. Mm-hmm. When was the last time a person was ashamed about a broken arm? Uh, or about kind of maybe stepping on an, a nail and, and scratching themselves. Well, in the moment, we might tell ourselves, oh, I could have been more careful. But it's generally not something that we would attack ourselves about or consider a character flaw. Right. But then when it comes to negative thinking, or even I would say negative mm-hmm. feelings, especially when we're stuck mm-hmm. in those places, we really do shame ourselves quite a bit. And I I think something that was really important for me to communicate today is that there is a reason that we have these limited mindsets and it's not a character flaw. It's from wounds and words that have, have been spoken to us or things that have happened to us that have forced us into a mode of survival that went on Mm -hmm. to form these beliefs that are harmful rather than healthy and helpful. But like we said, that's not the end of the story. There is hope after that. And it's always amazing because I always enjoy our conversation so much. But man, does time go by fast when we're talking. And within that, though, I wanted you to come back because I, I want to talk a little bit more about moving beyond this and how to strengthen ourselves. And it, we've already started a great foundation, that being with God, but just being able to, I think, grasp a little bit more and get some more practicals to what does that look like? So, Cindy, would you please come back? I would love to. I would love to do that.
All right, you guys, <laughs> this is this is not new because we we know that we tend to chat a little bit and you're going to come back next week to listen to the second part. And that's why I'm requesting come back next week as we continue this conversation on limited beliefs, our brain activity, and, and just how to be okay in the midst of all this. Thank you guys. See you next week. Mm-hmm.